Good morning, this is Dr. Jen Jua. I'm a board certified facial plastic surgeon and today I will demonstrate my technique for uh, excision of basal cell carcinoma on the nose, which is a very common entity, um, followed by frozen section and then reconstruction of the defect using a bilobed flap. First and the foremost thing is designing the bilobed flap and defining your defect. If the patient already had Mohs excision, then you have your defect defined for you. But if you will be doing an excision and frozen section yourself, it is very important to make sure you get good margins and then design a flap accordingly. So I will start first with the design of the flap. As you can see, because of previous biopsy, it is almost imperceptible to define the defect. It's very important to bring preoperative photographs to <clears throat> accurately locate the defect. If the patient has oily skin, you might have to scrub it to have a proper marking. How deep do you anticipate the uh, carcinoma going in? Not very deep at all. I think uh, just the skin itself, not even the fat underneath. And uh, when you are dissecting, you go a little deeper than you think you would, and that you would need to go. And this way you can ensure that you will get negative margins underneath and we will confirm it with the pathologist once we send it out to them. Within 20 minutes to half hour, they will get back to us. And is the pathologist in Marston Medical Center? Yes, actually they come to this building. They will be here any minute and waiting for us to give it to them in one of the rooms. As you can see, just cleaning vigorously with alcohol wipes has better defined our defect that was not visible earlier. And that was because of denuding the very superficial epithelial layer that developed after the biopsy. So this cleaning process will allow us to better identify and mark our defect. I usually start by just putting dots around it and then combining the dots so as you can see, after making the dots, I've defined the defect, and we have easily about two to three millimeters around the defect. And at this point, assuming that the margins are confirmed, we will define our pivotal point first, which is equal to the radius of this defect. Our radius is about 5.5 millimeter. We extend it laterally to define our pivotal point. Next, we'll be drawing an arc. With experience, you can draw it without any assistance with a suture. But in the beginning, it's probably better to use a suture to help you draw the arc. You can hold it at the pivotal point and the first arc should be at the tangent of the defect. The second arc will be to the center of the defect. After this, we define the base of the first part of the flap by measuring the defect. The diameter of the defect will be one centimeter. So we go and we measure the base at one centimeter. And again, one centimeter. The first flap is designed using the arc and then the second is designed as a triangle going superiorly and that is the design of the flap. So you can see the arcs, the defect, the first flap, and the second flap. 
the tip will be discarded after we inset the flap. At this point, the design is complete, and this is the most critical part of the whole procedure. As you can see, the patient has been marked, injected, prepped with ophthalmic betadine, and draped. For injection, we have used 5 cc of lidocaine, 0.5 percent, with 1 is to 200,000 epinephrine, mixed equally with 5 cc of marcaine, 0.25 percent plain. In the design, one thing that is missing is the anticipation of a dog ear, also known as a standing cutaneous deformity that will develop around this end. We will start by removing our basal cell carcinoma defect, orienting it with sutures, and then we will wait for the histopathological confirmation of negative margins. It is very important to bevel your incision outwards to help evert the edges and also catch any outlying basal cell cancer. At this point, we will mark the sutures to orient the specimen. As you can see, the specimen has been removed and it has been oriented with a long suture at 12 o'clock and a short suture at 9 o'clock, and we can see our defect at this time. We will send a specimen for frozen section, and in the meantime, we'll perform the hemostasis and then wait for the margins to come back. At this point, uh, we have received our frozen section results and the margins are clear. There was still residual basal cell carcinoma in the center of the defect, but the margins on the surrounding boundary and underneath are all negative. We can safely elevate our flap and inset it at this time. This is the dog ear or the standing cutaneous deformity removed at this end that will facilitate moving the flap, the first part of the flap, over into the defect.
to feel a little pain. I'm gonna give you a little bit more medicine. A bit more local, please. That's a little pinch right there. I'm gonna give you some more numbing medication right there. Having medication going in, so now you won't feel anything. Antibiotic irrigation as well, Janice. Some bacitracin, please. Yeah. Great. Down a little cold water coming in. Cover this eye, I'll cover the other eye. cleaning. It has antibiotic solution bacitracin in it that cleans it out so there's no germs anywhere. Um, short one, please. I'll let you cut and dab as I go along, please. At this point, the closure is complete, but as you can see, the second part of the flap, the second lobe of the bilobe flap, needs to be trimmed to fit the defect. The trimming is best left towards the end, so there's no discrepancy. Let's go. 
one for the nasal passages to close up. To close up? I'll just, you know, yes. can't breathe through my nose. Exactly, from the swelling, absolutely it does, but it'll open up later. That's just temporary. At this time, the procedure is complete, and we are at the end. And you can see the final inset of the first lobe, the second lobe, and the closure of the last defect. And at this stage, we apply some bacitracin, and we do not use any dressings on top. Patient is instructed to clean the wound with hydrogen peroxide three times a day starting tonight, and apply bacitracin, and ice a lot for the first 48 hours. The sutures will be removed at about five days from surgery. Now we are all done. We'll just clean you up now and we are out of here. At this point, we can observe the changes that happen after excision of basal cell carcinoma and frozen section and local flap one week after the procedure. As you can see, the stitches have been removed and the appearance of the nose is pretty decent. And at this point, patient can re-engage in social activities. Now we are at one month follow-up after excision of basal cell carcinoma of the nose with frozen section and local bilobe flap reconstruction. As you can see, at this time, it is barely perceptible that any reconstruction was done. In majority of the cases, even a dermabrasion is not necessary. However, it can be utilized in cases of an abnormal scar or a visible scar. We will go closer to observe for any telltale signs of surgery and erythema is the only sign that we can perceive at this time.